Jason McIntyre joins us. Straight Fire is the podcast on iHeartRadio every weekday morning, 5 a.m. Eastern time. Um, all right, if you're the Bucks, what do you do? <laughs> Good to talk to you, Doug. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks. I don't know. I mean, listen, if you look around at that roster they got, uh, five guys are, thir- are 30 or older. Chris Middleton looks, you know, kind of he's about to turn 30. I just, I don't, I don't know what the Bucks can do to keep Giannis. I mean, maybe you try some kind of Hail Mary package to go after uh, someone like an Aaron Gordon, but does he fit with Giannis? You know, they built this great regular season team, Doug, and all they've done is just fail miserably in the playoffs. And, and you know this about sports. You want to put guys in a position to succeed, and Giannis has done that in the regular season, and then Budenholzer gets to the playoffs, and Giannis's usage rate tanks because teams have figured him out, and Budenholzer hasn't adjusted. You hate to blame the coach, but part of that's on him. Um, yeah, I mean, part of it is on him. I, I Look, Giannis has to be able to make shots. Did you see this stat? Ryan Music gave it to me, my producer, your former producer at Fox Sports Radio. A great Ryan Music. He is. He is great. Where um, of shots from five feet or beyond in the playoffs, he made 36% of them. Yeah. Listen, they, listen. you know the strategy. They built a wall. Doug, we both, we both coach youth sports. You probably a little bit more than I do. But, like, you know the star players in the league. You're, you love basketball. You know how to solve them. Like, it's not that difficult. You build a wall at the foul line for Giannis, keep him out of the paint, and then other times you double him and you give him any three-pointer he wants. And they've frustrated the hell out of him. And the rest of his teammates haven't stepped up. I mean, the Bucks front office keeping Bledsoe over Brogdon. What a debacle that's been. Well, that's, um, one of those, that's one of those things we see it all the time. You trade for a guy. And when you trade for him, you're like obligated to give him a big contract because otherwise it means means that your trade was a bad trade. I don't care if if the guy doesn't fit, you get rid of him. If the guy's not as good as as he wants in his contract, you you've tested it out. You're you're better off moving on than you are signing up to a guy long term. You end up losing a guy like Malcolm Brogdon. So what do you think about this strategy? The Bucks go to you and say, "Hey man, we need you to commit. Um, we 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 need the supermax. You got to sign it because we can't go into next. We don't want to lose you for nothing." Giannis obviously is going to say, yeah, I can't do that. If you're the Bucks, I think you've got to explore the trade market. It's just a natural progression in a front office. You've got to say, okay, well, he, he's not giving us a commitment. We don't want to get Duranted here where Durant just bounces and we're, we're just left holding a bag of nothing. You know, So I, I think you may have to explore that. Obviously, there's going to be a robust trade market for a two-time MVP. I mean, hell, the Knicks haven't had a star uh, in years. They will, they'll do Bill Bend over backwards to take Giannis. Yeah, but what do they send back? Like you're you you have a very Whatever very good team. Whatever the you're... Bucks want, <laughs> every future number one, R.J. Barrett, uh, give up Mitchell Robinson. I mean, listen, I know that doesn't sound great, but we've seen this. Like Anthony Davis, you know, uh, the Pelicans got a nice haul for him. Uh, you know, Paul uh, Paul George. Uh, I, I thought the Thunder did as well as possible. Uh, you get what you can and you move on. Like that's just life in the NBA. It's, I know the small market guys are going to be pissed, but the reality is, Doug, like. That's how the league works. The stars get to control everything. Where they want to go, you got to deal with it. Yeah, where they want to go, you do, in fact, have to deal with it. That is the voice of the great Jason McIntyre. Straight Fire. Straight Fire is the podcast. Of course, you can uh, download it on the iHeartRadio app. Uh, what were your impressions of the Lakers last night? Phenomenal. I mean, playoff Rondo showing up. I saw you getting in like a Twitter skirmish with people. Like, Doug, a lot of the guys in this NBA Twitter thing, they just don't get basketball. Like, it's basic stuff that they're not understanding. The Lakers, when they went small in that third quarter, their defensive rotations were phenomenal. I mean, Vogel, who was a defensive master, really, that's what he was before he got to the Lakers, not so much in Orlando, but uh, Vogel knows defense. Like, I I was super impressed. Uh, Starting Morris in the second half was great. Um, I think he's finally, you know, getting on to the understanding of, hey, we're not going to play Dwight Howard in the series. We don't need JaVale. Let's go small. And Rondo's showing up. Caruso's rotating. How about my guy Kuzma? I, I tried to tell Corey Brewer, former NBA pro, that uh, an NBA trainer told me Kyle Kuzma is a guy who potentially can give Harden problems with his length. And Corey Brewer's like, no way, no shot. Kuzma doesn't defend. I'm telling you, Kuzma is, is a capable defender. We haven't seen it a lot. But he's not a terrible matchup for Harden, given the Lakers' options. Um, yeah, I mean, the big thing was he was supposed to be a scorer, and he struggled to score. Yet last night they made him do a cutter, and it was, it was, it was far better, right? I mean, that's really kind of what it came, what it came down to. It, it got to be far and far, far better. So, 
Um, I mean, do you think the Rockets can win another game in the series, or are they just so shaken? Doug, they hadn't lost a game this season, making 40% of their threes. They just lost back-to-back games, making 40% of their threes against the Lakers. I, I mean, Harden has seen this movie before. You've seen the rom-com. You know what happens at the end. I wonder if Harden and Westbrook are kind of checked out. We know Daniel House. I'm sure you've heard the rumors about him trying to sneak a girl into the bubble, and he didn't even get to play last night. Like, Rockets feel like an implosion is happening. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, look, their whole thing is that they have one way of beating you. If they can't beat you that way, they got no second year. Yeah, there's Mike D'Antoni, 27 missed threes against uh, the Warriors. By the way, hey, Kevin Durant's out here in my town this week. Uh, I saw he's that. playing base, playing a little baseball catch. I got a buddy lives in Manhattan Beach. He texted me that he saw him. KD's yeah, out in the I, beach I, uh, just hanging out. I, I sent Duran an Instagram DM. Yo, you know I live here, right? Let's let's get together. We got a basketball court in our backyard. So uh, I'm going to try to get him over to get up some shots. You know, we'll see what Duran says. <laughs> <laughs> You're a clown. You're a clown. Uh, what's the matter hey, with man, the Clippers? Why aren't, they, why aren't they Why aren't they? Why aren't they? Uh, uh, consistently dominant? Who's that? The Clippers. Because of chemistry. I mean, listen to this. Reggie Jackson, right? He, he'd been playing like a lot of minutes in the bubble. Remember, Beverly was hurt. Reggie Jackson played five minutes in game three. Didn't get a shot up. And this is a guy who has complained in OKC when he was behind Westbrook. Complained in Detroit. I'm telling you, I would not be shocked. Remember, Montrez Harrell? He has not shown well. Zubaz is playing better defense. I, I think chemistry is going to be the question. Like, are the, If the Lakers match up Hunt Lou Will, and Doc pulls Lou Williams off the floor in the final five minutes. How's he going to take that? This guy was there for the down years, for the bridge between Lob City and this, and now Lou Will is benched in crunch time? Like, I, I just don't know how that's going to go over. I'm sticking with my Lakers pick, man. I know you like the Clips a lot. Um, I, I, I like I the Clips the on paper, but I, I would agree, and I do think they have more weapons to – they have more scoring weapons. I do think their interior defense and lack of interior scoring, when you don't, when you don't put Kawhi near the bucket, can – can leave a lot to uh, to to be desired. How many times have we? Have, how many times have we fooled ourselves into thinking I'm going to bet against LeBron? Like it, it's just not smart when he's got a team. I mean, Anthony Davis was a very good number one in New Orleans. He's the perfect one A with the Lakers. Like it's just perfect for Anthony Davis. LeBron, I, I just I don't see how LeBron is denied of a title this year. But I'll say this: Boston will give them problems in the finals. It, it is, this Celtics team is strong, assuming they get by the Heat. Yeah, assuming they get by the heat. That's the voice of Jason McIntyre. I like this Boston team. I really do. Does oh, it say yeah. more about Boston or about what Toronto lacks? Yeah, I mean, you, we, we knew Toronto was a bit of a paper tiger. Uh, the city of Toronto hates me because of a Fox Sports Radio rant I did against them last summer. Um, they would exceeded expectations this year, but um, how about this? Is Giannis a potential landing spot in Toronto, right? You get Giannis, Siakam. You've got to assume Lowry moves on, Gasol moves on, they extend Van Vliet. You know, Toronto is one of these cosmopolitan cities that the players love. You know that Toronto is full of very attractive women, good party city. Um, I, I, I mean, I think they're going to lose this series and they're going to lose to the Celtics today, but I wouldn't be shocked if they made a legit run at, at, at uh, Giannis and were able to pry him away from the Knicks. I would be surprised. I mean, Giannis told, uh, told Chris Haynes he sees a brick wall he wants to run through Come it. Come on. It's an emotional move, Doug. Come on. You know that. I mean, like, I, listen. He, I, I don't know him well enough moment. to know what he thinks. Yeah, they, they just lost the series. What's he going to say? Oh, I'm done. These guys suck. Eric Bledsoe's a joke. Like, he's not going to bash the franchise. Like, I, I understand. You know, he, he wants to stick around and be that guy. But you know there's no loyalty in sports, Doug. I mean, if, imagine I if say, don't, don't, say, don't ever say there's no loyalty in sports. Just playing like you know, Damian Lillard says stayed loyal to Portland. He's not at the level of Giannis, but he he has stayed loyal. There's plenty of guys that stayed loyal. Right? That, yeah, that's why the Kevin Durant with? thing is so surprising. Well, what, what what did they end up with? The guys who were loyal. Who Russell Westbrook stayed in OKC and they ended up trading him. Uh, he asked to be like, traded. I, I they, he a, he asked book. to be traded. He wasn't. That's part of it. He wasn't good enough. That's really kind of what it comes down so to. So how do you determine and he has to be, who's good he, enough to be loyal? I mean, Damian Lillard. No, 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 no. I'm saying, it, it, like, if he they didn't win, some of that's a lot of that's on Russell Westbrook, right? Like we put this all. It's like the Giannis thing. Like we can put it on all everybody else, but Giannis isn't good enough right now to win. Yeah, is the coaching okay? But if Giannis could make a shot, they would have won the series. Period. Stop. Okay. End of story. Well, I don't know about that. Won the series? Like Giannis wasn't terrible in the series. His teammates were not very good. I mean, and Budenholzer has not adjusted at all. 
Like, I'm not going to kill Giannis for this, Doug. I also, you, you look at a guy like Jimmy Butler, right? Chicago had him, lost him. Jimmy Butler should have been the guy in Minnesota, should have been the guy in Philly. He's perfect in Miami. He is a leader. He's their fourth quarter alpha, and every guy on the team understands that. Guys like Carl Anthony Towns are too soft. He can't handle Jimmy Butler. I, I think they had a, a woman issue on the side there. And, and Philadelphia, oh, is it Embiid's team or Simmons' team? It's friggin' Jimmy Butler's team. That's your money player, and they let him go. Like, you got to put guys in the perfect spot, and I, I don't think Giannis is – I know this is going to sound bad, two-time MVP – um, I don't think he's a number one in the playoffs. I think he's a 1A like an Anthony Davis. It's a guard wing league, and I think Anthony Davis is perfect next to LeBron. Giannis would be perfect near Curry or, or uh, someone else. Who do you like tomorrow night? Um, I'm going to go with the over. Can I take a total? or? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I'd lean Chiefs. I know you don't bet double-digit favorites and make money in the NFL, but I, I just don't trust the Texans' defense at all. Uh, it's, it's pretty bad. And uh, Pat Mahomes will light them up. I'll go. I'll go. Chiefs thirty-seven, Texans twenty-four. Who is your big sleeper in the NFL? Uh, NFC Detroit Lions. I've got them winning the NFC North. Um, and in the AFC, I'm not. You know, I'm contractually prevented from saying the Jets are my sleeper. So I'll go with the Cleveland Browns making the playoffs in the AFC. All right. With Detroit, who starts out with the Bears at home, then goes to Green Bay. Obviously, no fans. Goes to Carolina. By the way, P.S., goes to Arizona. Huh? Look at that. Look at the Bears injury report. It's brutal. I love the Lions week one. Great stuff, yeah, dude. I'm I love. Uh, thank, stuff, dude. Huh, thanks so much for joining us. Loving uh, Straight Fire. You can download the podcast every weekday morning, 5 a.m. <clears throat> Eastern time. Uh, Jason McIntyre, who just hung up on us. 